going on everybody welcome back to another edition of the great lake sports podcast you're listening to jared and jack and we are we're, we're talking about the pistons today a little reluctantly we actually have a game tonight scheduled the pistons are going to be taking on the warriors um jared from in your opinion man what what's going on right now because we started so hot it seemed like this team was like you know maybe going to break that 500 mark by game 10 but at this point it's not really seeming that way yeah well after three games the sample size wasn't small we looked really good but now we played we got we played four more games we played four more games all four were straight losses not only that but they were pretty bad losses as well um like we were kind of talking about earlier in the pod okc they came out and smoked us um it was kind of a letdown game but kind of already talked about that and then we go to the trailblazers this was our this was our get right spot um we were pretty much up the entire game third quarter they made a run carried into the fourth quarter and we couldn't we couldn't sustain anything we couldn't sustain any offense we had nothing going turnovers killed us once again and uh we the, the worst team in basketball the trailblazers ended up coming coming up beat us and one by nine and then now you take us to the pelicans the pelicans didn't play their two best players no zion and uh no no brandon ingram got smoked once again pretty the we only lost by nine but that this the final score was cl- much closer than what the game was telling you at a certain point we were down almost 30 points i mean guys this is their c team here Th- this is embarrassing and every one of them that stepped up into the starting line had a game too. I mean, every one of them averaged like 25 points. It was kind of ridiculous. A hundred percent. And then bring us to the Suns game. No Devin Booker, no Bradley Beal. A lot of players that won't see many minutes when they come back. And they absolutely crushed us. And getting to your point, Jack, that Pelicans team, dude, they had Dyson Daniels lighting us up. You can't have that a team a coach and an organization that's been preaching defense this hard and this much you can't have a you can't have teams resting their best players when they go up and play you and expect to hold this defensive accountability for your team because i don't know where that is right now and that's apparently why jay nivy's not getting many minutes and i don't know the defense is bad. It seems like Jaden Ivey is kind of getting held accountable for stuff. It's almost like coach has like a like something against him. Like I see Killian making all these mistakes. I, as much as I think Asar has been playing great these first few games, he's been making mistakes too. And for whatever reason, it's just Ivy's making Ivy's making mistakes. I, it, that's the way it seems to me, the viewer at least, um, punishing Ivy over everyone else for no reason, but. You know, to each their own. Killian, man, when when are we going to give up on him? Though, when's it? When's the time come? The time has come long ago. But yeah. the bad thing is, Monty has, and he's continuing saying that Kip, he likes Killian for some reason. I don't know what it is. I seriously don't. You, his defense is not that good. To- it hasn't been that good. I even texted you that. I was like, man. For Killian being a defensive minded guy, and that's the basically the only reason he's seeing the court. He's not very defensive minded. And this is gonna be and so last game against the Suns, Ivy was out with some mysterious illness. Didn't play. And did we look good? Nope. And did we look good defensively? Because that's apparently why we're not playing him. Nope. We looked horribly defensively. And guys, they, I don't know if you already mentioned, I know you mentioned it for the game before that, but they didn't have two of their best players out there either. They didn't have D-Book out there. They didn't have Bradley Beal out there. And still defensively, we looked horrible. The, The fact is that Monty is not playing Jaden Ivey because he thinks his defense is that poor. But in reality, it's coming, it's looking like he's not playing him because he has like some type of vendetta against him. Exactly. That's the exactly right word. Because 
it's nothing's making sense and it's he's not doing this fairly just i mean even if we take killian out of the equation just say take him out of the equation when obviously he shouldn't play over ivy we all know that but take him out all right cade has he is number one in the league for turnovers right now it's he's playing great but his turnovers are killing our team what's monty is monty holding him accountable in any way no. no. And, so here's my qu- I have a question yeah. for you just on that because like so we're playing Hayes over Ivy because of his defensive value. Well, who who would really be starting if we had a healthy team? It'd be Bogdanovich. And what does Monty think he's going to be getting out of Bogdanovich on defense? Like Ivy's defense, I'd take Ivy's defense over Boyan's like I- I'm just confused, man, cuz I mean and that's where me and a lot of fans are kind of coming up with this weird vendetta thing because nothing is making sense. Because if he's preaching defense that much, first off, Bojan's going to start when he comes back. He already said that. So your defense is already going to drop automatically. And if you're just saying you're preaching defense while you're, you know, Monty Morris, uh, Alec Burks, and Bojan are out, well then, okay, fine. Preach it. Preach it as much as you want. But our defense looks horrible absolutely horrible against teams second and third units They're yeah killian's out this team if killian's out there for defensive support at this point i feel like we should have learned something and like you know what defense can be good and all and you know what we've got a couple of defensive minded guys out there stewart duran has been playing great on defense asar's been playing great on defense how about we start putting some points up and a hundred percent in basketball some the, the team that scores more wins isn't that a concept it's it is a it's, <laughs> it's crazy. It is a, that's a crazy concept and i was i just want to say too like there's been like a lot of talk about like the beat writers kind of like not asking the tough questions and not kind of reaming monty out for not playing J- Jaden. but they have asked multiple questions throughout multiple games now and the answer has always been the same it's he has to get better on defense and that's about it. And the other weird thing that I've noticed is when they ask Monty questions about Sasser or maybe about another player, Monty will say, oh, yeah, he's playing really good. He's a nice compliment to Cade and Killian, not even a mention of Ivy. So that's, that's concerning crazy. to me. It's so crazy. He's our fifth pick, man. He's our Cade and Cade and Ivy are should be our fire and ice combo. It's I don't so, know. I have one more question for you. I have no idea, but let's just say this continues, man. And for whatever reason, Monty Williams just has this vendetta against Jade and Ivy. Do we do we dish him? Do you think do you see Monty dishing him? Is that something that Monty would be able to get done while like with Troy Weaver's permission, basically? You know, I don't know how Weaver is feeling about this situation. And that's like one thing that I, that I would be like very interested to know, like, is he kind of more because Monty wasn't his coach, right? Like he wanted Monty. Monty's a great coach and everything, but he wanted to get more of like a coach that was new, um, more, I guess you could say up and coming, but someone who would maybe help um maybe would listen to Troy more and maybe wouldn't be just like, no, I'm playing the best players now because we have to win. So I wonder if he's a little salty about this whole thing. So I don't know. I don't know if he would give him permission or not to trade his fifth overall pick, who's looking really good. I would hope he wouldn't. But at this point, I don't know. That was just something I figured... I had that it popped up in my head. I was like, man, wouldn't that be crazy if before we even get the chance to see Cunningham and Ivy together, they dish Ivy out, man. That would just it'd be it'd be tough. Well, and we're not even playing Ivy that much. So teams are gonna look at that and his trade value is not gonna be nearly as high. You know, who are you gonna trade him for? That's well, that was my question is like, is he he's not a plus value player anymore if he was a fifth overall pick and he's like coming off the bench right now it's 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 unfortunate unless unless someone really sees the value in him which i still think he has i mean guys we saw our last trade 
And this is no shot on Troy Weaver, but this is just this kind of tells you that, you know, those, you know, those first round picks don't always make they don't always pan out. Our Sadiq Bay trade, Sadiq Bay, he was yeah, he he wasn't doing his assignment, but also he didn't have Monty Williams as a coach. And we just trade him away for a big that's not even going to see the floor unless multiple players are hurt. And James Wiseman, that was a complete him a, waste. Yeah, we gave him away, man. It hurt. It hurt. It's just it's one of those things, right? Like, do you tra- who do you trade Ivy for? You know, another me. another, another guard. Top, another top ten pick that didn't pan, that's not panned out yet. Why not just take your chances with Ivy? Play him more. Our team's horrible. Play him more. You think that it was a little premature for all the talk about like this is the team we picked, this is the team that we wanted to go with, like you guys are it, we got to figure it out. Was it premature because I know that came after a hot start? Yeah, I think it was pretty premature and if you like looked back before our first three games, a lot of people were saying like this roster isn't constructed right to have to to go on and be a plus 500 team and to make the playoffs. I mean, a lot of people, this isn't true, but like a lot of jokes is we have five point guards and five centers. Like it's not <laughs> quite like that, but almost, I mean, we have no, we have no <laughs> stretch fours. Like there's a lot of players that we're just missing that a lot of that teams that are winning right now in 2023 basketball have. So I'm almost glad that Brandon Ingram didn't play because had I seen him play, I would have been like, that's that's what we were looking for. That that position is exactly what I'm looking for as far as he's got the height, he's got the shooting, he's got the defensive value. I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. There's a lot that can happen in the next, what, 73 games. Yeah. Yeah. And then tonight we got the we got the Golden State Warriors. So who knows, right? Is Ivy gonna play? I don't know. Hopefully. All right. Let's 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 stop talking about all the bad stuff. Let's Let's bring something good into here. Okay. <laughs> Troy Weaver. What a selection by moving up in the draft. Marcus Sasser. Yo. Steel, man. Yeah, he's playing really good, man. He's playing really good. I wasn't going to say this. Like, I even told you before the podcast, I wasn't going to say this on the pod, but he's he kind of reminds me of, like, a Markel Fultz kind of guy. He's he's obviously wasn't ranked as high of a, of a scout coming out of college, but... He's he's really looking good out there. He is a sharp shooter, man. Like he, he hardly misses. He looks like like if Markel Fultz, like if his prospect projection, if he reached that ceiling, and oh my god, this top five, like this five, this you know six games that the Pistons have played, that would be Sasser right now. Sasser is an absolute flamethrower, man. He is. And what were you so what was that? Tell me again, what was that stat about him coming out of the combine or whatever, making how many did he make of his yeah, three pointers? So a lot of like scouts and uh NBA teams were saying that Marcus Sasser absolutely dominated the combine in both years that he was there. And they said that his three point shooting was record breaking. And I don't know what the exact stat was, but I believe in the star drill he only missed one shot so yeah that's so crazy man and we have him and we gotta start using him man like he did get so i will say against against the suns where obviously we didn't have ivy he did get 30 minutes and i think he used those 30 minutes well yeah oh yeah no i you know what too i think sasser should still get those 30 minutes when ivy comes back the player that needs to see a reduction is Killian. He is doing <laughs> nothing for us. We should see what happens if we don't play him for one game, but that's just me. Anyway, final Let's, thoughts. Go ahead. I, go ahead. I I would be very happy if they decided to set Killian one game just to see how things went. And, you know, we'll see his sickness above his name, too. And... We'll see because we already saw one game without Jay Nivey, and it was arguably argumentally the worst game we've had so far. So let's see. I completely agree. And is uh, that where you want to leave it out, Jared J? Yeah, man. It'll be uh it'll be interesting tonight. We'll uh there's a lot of things to look at. 
and a lot of things to evaluate. So for sure. I think we'll probably end up doing another one later this week. Um, again, not a whole lot of pissed or I'm sorry, Lions content coming out. So trying to crank out some piston stuff. And then, like we said, we have Red Wings content coming to you guys having some technical difficulties, but we'll get it out there to you. Again, you guys know the drill. If you're listening on one of the podcast platforms, leave us a five-star review. And if you are listening on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, the whole nine yards. All right, guys, go Pistons. Let's see if we can take one back here. Peace. Peace out, guys.